Hello guys, welcome back to the Unwants of Mind podcast. I believe this is episode 16. We're at 16 already, you know. It's um, so that, that's an achievement, you know, we're building up slowly, you know. Eventually it will be episode 100 and I'll be like, holy fuck, <laughs> you know. Even episode 50, you know, that, that would be exciting as well. You know, but, you know, it's small goals. We're taking small steps to reach the bigger goal. Um, and obviously, you know, the bigger goal could be, you know, it, it, part of the bigger goal is reaching like, you know, a, a three digit number, right? Like 100, right? Episode 100. But the bigger goal with my podcast and the main reason why I created it is to um, create more connections, you know, through, you know, social media, you know, just online in general, you know, create connections, you know. Which creating connections creates more opportunities, you know, for what whatever whatever endeavors I, I I um that I'm working on, you know, towards my success, whether it's my brand, you know, my clothing, uh, my music, whatever it is, you know, just getting opportunities, you know, getting more gigs, you know, um, because I also want to do acting and stuff, you know, but it, it, you know, stuff like that takes time, and if I wanna really um launch my brand i got i gotta take small steps and like i I can have all these you know dreams but if i'm not working towards it small steps each day will never reach so um also i I just want to say i apologize there's like there's um some like background noise you know some people are working outside out out of my house and um yeah that's that's the noise so you know but i i still have to record by all means necessary so um yeah, it sucks, but hey, you know, it is what it is. Um, yeah, but I, I do apologize in advance if that, that is distracting. I'm going to try my best just to be talking over it. So you guys aren't just like listening to that, you know, <laughs> you know, at, at all times. But yeah, um, th- there's been a lot of um, a lot of entertainment news happening that happened since the last time I recorded the podcast, which was, you know, a week. Um yeah, a lot of stuff has happened, um, but I really want to talk about the major stuff, you know what I mean, because um, I usually have a lot of topics written down for the podcast, and I only really get it into, like, four of them, if if I'm, I'm not, like, fully indulging, you know, three to four, I'm going to say, so, um, yeah, I'm not going to have, like, I'm not, I'm not going to list, like, eight topics in the beginning and just only get them four. Because then you'll be like, oh, you didn't talk about this. You didn't talk about that. I want you to talk about this. So, I'm only going to be talking about, you know, from now on, like, it depends how much I, it, that topic needs to be said. But um, I'm going to say three to four, maybe three to five. If there's, like, a little small topic I can talk about, you know, quickly, maybe three to five. But um, I think three to four better. I, I think it's really quality over quantity when it comes to this. You know, just really because my, my goal with the podcast while recording the podcast, I really want to break down certain topics. And I really I really don't want to feel rushed because when I have so many topics, I feel kind of rushed. I'm like, oh, I, I got to get through this topic quickly and just break down everything so I can get to the next one. And I just I, I don't know if that's really healthy. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I really just want to put my entire focus on one topic and then just be like, all right, cool. I talked about it for 30 minutes. Let me get into the next one and just not feel rushed. You know what I mean? Um, so, yeah. Um, so, I do have the topics for today. I don't have a thumbnail yet. So, I don't know in what list or what order I'm, I, um, I need to go through. Uh, obviously, you guys see the thumbnail already. You know what's the first, second, third. Um, I don't because I haven't created it yet. So, um, so the topics I just have for today, it's the um, NBA championships, um, obviously, because the conference finals have finished um, what, well, you know, the Warriors versus um, the the Mavericks and, um, you know, the Warriors won. Um, yes. Yay. <laughs> that that was my pick. You know, Warriors are my favorite team, obviously, if you haven't. Um, known that already yeah the Warriors Golden State Warriors basketball my favorite team and um you know Celtics versus the Heat and um the Celtics won and by the way they just shut down the noise in the background so hopefully they'll keep it shut off for the rest of the podcast because something to turn it back on so hopefully it stays this way (laughs) um so yeah the Celtics won 
um, amazing because the Celtics are my second favorite team in the NBA. And um, yeah, dude, the Celtics beat the Heat by um, four points. And holy fuck, what a game. I, I, I was literally tearing up when Jimmy Butler shot that last shot. I was almost, I was like, almost like tearing up. I was like, oh my God, I hope he misses it. I'm like, no, there's no way he's going to make it, dude. And then he misses it. I'm like, yay. I was so excited, dude. I was like, dude, if he makes this, this is fucked. Because then he'll get like a foul. He'll get a three-point and a foul. So he'll tie the game. And I was just like, fuck. He needs to miss this shot. And he did. So, yeah. So, yeah. So the Warriors versus the Celtics are the championships. It's going to be the championship game now. Um, yeah, and that's going to begin on Thursday. So there's really not much I can say about that other than my predictions as of right now. But, um, yeah, the next time I record a podcast, I can talk about, I can, I can talk about it more because there'll be a few games by then that, um, you know, that have been won by whatever team. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, first topic for today and being championships. Uh, se- second topic for today is, um, the movie Top Gun. So the movie Top Gun Maverick has uh, released, um, obviously starring Tom Cruise. And I really want to talk about it. I haven't watched it yet, but the main reason I want to talk about it because I saw it was trending. And it said Top Gun Maverick breaks Memorial Day box office records with $151 million uh, dollars, lands Tom Cruise's biggest movie launch. So that's why I want to talk about it. Um, I probably will see it this weekend, if I'm being honest. Um... Maybe next next podcast I'll talk about my review on it. Maybe not, obviously not a headline, but um, maybe just a little small segment. Like, you know how I said three to five if the last, if I have a topic that's short. Yeah, maybe I'll do that. Um, if you really, if you guys really want it, you know what I mean? Um, so third topic for today, obviously this is, um, I probably should have started off with this one because this one's kind of the main, main, the biggie. <laughs> um, the Stranger Things Season 4 review. And um, the Stranger, Se- and Stranger Things 4, I can talk about it because I have watched it. Um, season 4, uh, to be fair. Uh, Stranger Things Season 4, I have watched it. Um, I have not finished the last episode, but... Um, and I believe that's episode seven, but um, I have watched most of it, so I can talk about a bit of it. Um, I, may, I might spoil some stuff because it's just like I don't know how, how how else would I talk about it without spoiling it. So maybe a little bit spoilers, but I, I, I'll 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 um say it before I I'll I'll say like kind of a alert like I'm about to spoil this part. So if you guys want to skip through it, by all means necessary, you do you, you do what you gotta do. But um, I, I'll I'll make sure to be clear of it. That I'm gonna say a spoiler. So maybe some parts I won't spoil it, but you know, when I do, I'll let you know. Um, and the last topic we have um Justin Timberlake sells his music uh, catalog for one hundred million dollars. Um, you do what you want with that. You know what I mean, like. If you think that's that was a good move, by all means necessary. Um, you do you, obviously, but I don't know if that's a good move. I, 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 I really don't know. Maybe he made all his money from that music already, and he's just like, oh, it's kind of dead at this point. I don't know. Just, uh, dude, I mean, when, when you say Justin Timberlake, dude, that's like literally an icon. You know what I mean? Like, that's, like, he's made some crazy music, especially with, like, Timberland and um, Jay-Z. He's made some crazy shit, dude. Suit and Tie is one of my favorite fucking songs of all time, bro. I fucking was bumping that shit in, you know, fifth grade. You know, I used to, um, let me search up Frankie Mac 34. I used to record myself lip-syncing songs, and that was one of them. I just, dude, that one just hit me different, bro. I was just, like... One of the main reasons why I was such into like so into music because of that, you know, just the way it sounded. I've never heard anything like it, so you know, and still to this day, you know, I listen back to his music. And I'm like, holy fuck, this is insane! Like you literally you don't hear shit like that anymore, and it's just like, you know, he's a one of one. So I don't know if selling that, selling his music, his entire music catalog, 
you know, especially in the age of where people are trying to be independent and shit. Just, I don't know if that's the best example, but obviously this is his life. He's not, obviously he is kind of a role model to people, but he shouldn't feel pressured. Obviously, you know, like Kendrick Lamar says in his new album, Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers, I chose me, I'm sorry. You know, he said it on his his song, Mirror. You know, I chose me, I'm sorry. I chose me, I'm sorry. You know, so, um, he chose himself, obviously. So, um, hey, you got that bag, though. I mean, 100 mil, dude. I mean, that's a fucking bag. That's a bag. You, you know, you can, you can buy a couple of chips with that. A couple of bags of chips, a couple, you know, lollipops. You know, that's that's a bag right there. Um. So, yeah, let's get right into it. So, for the first topic for today, uh, I'm just going to begin with the uh, NBA championships. Uh, because that's the one I kind of, you know, kind of urging to talk about right now. Um, so yeah, let me just get right into it. Um, so, so I, I want to get into the Warriors versus the Mavericks first. Um, I know this was, I know I, I might've talked about this last, last podcast, but, um, oh no, actually, no, I, I, I did talk about it briefly, I, I believe, but there wasn't a winner yet. So yeah, the Warriors beat the Mavericks, um, I believe a 3-1, 4-1, I mean, it was 4-1, it was a 4-1, you know, combined total of wins and losses. Um, so, yeah, obviously Warriors losing once to the Mavs. And the Mavs losing four times to the Warriors, which is equivalent to um, winning the series. So the Warriors won, the, won that series. Um, for me, it was obvious. I knew the Warriors were going to either beat or sweep the Mavs. Um, after, uh, like... After game three, I was like, they they have to sweep the Mavs, right? But then I understood that the Warriors, uh, for game four, they played the Mavs at, at their arena, right? Like, the Warriors played at the Mavs arena. So I was like, so people were saying, like, oh, the reason the Warriors didn't win this game, game four, was because they want to, you know, get ticket sales at, the Warriors Arena, you know, which is the Chase Center. Um, and I was just like, oh, this makes so much sense because people would be like, oh, bro, you're just trying to make an ex- excuses that, you know, they didn't sweep. You know what I mean? I'm like, fair enough. But then I looked into it more. Then I was like, oh, they've done shit like this in the past. Like they, they've lost on purpose. So the next game that they won would be at their arena, and obviously they would get ticket sales. You know they would make more money. Um, obviously, home game that's a big benefit. Your fans are there. You know what I mean. You just feel less pressured, and um, it just it all made sense. You know you could celebrate where you are. You know where your where your you know team is based off of uh, based on. I mean. And I was just like, oh, okay, so they, I mean, obviously, and, and also they, they lost by 10 points in game four. So it's just like, it's not, it's not like, oh my God, they, they had a blowout. Like, bro, they lost by 10 points. You know what I mean? And that was a bad night too. That was literally when the, um, you know, rest in peace to the, you know, to the victims, but, but the mass shooting at, the, at that school in Texas, you know what I mean? So that was a bad night for everyone. You know, the coach, you know, Steve Kerr obviously went viral with, with the clip of just saying, like, enough is enough, you know. Um, and I, I, honestly, I, I really I really don't want to talk about it because he's like, uh, or talk about what happened because obviously, you know, a lot of, I mean, a lot of news media outlets have already talked about it. And my podcast really isn't um, anything, you know, it, it's like, it's, it's strictly... Um, what's it called? Entertainment news, not, you know, outside news like that. So, um, like, like, cause I, I just want to re- keep my podcast positive. Just keep it going. Have fun here. Like, this is just to have fun. You know what I mean? It's not talking about serious topics, obviously, but obviously I'm going to tell you my opinion at all times, you know, don't get that twisted, but you know, but, um, yeah, I mean, obviously that sucks. And, um, you know, I've, I've said my prayers already. You know, I, I've done all that. So, um, yeah, man. So, um, to get back on boat. Um, so, the Warriors, yeah. I mean, the Warriors lost on purpose in game four. And even if it was, wasn't on purpose, 
still a bad night, you know, bad night for everyone, I guess, because, you know, the maps, you know, they literally played game four in Texas where it happened, you know what I mean? So it's just like, I guess it was bad for everyone. But, um, you know, didn't stop Luca, obviously. Luca still dropped big on that night. And, um, yeah, I mean, they, they did learn because I was like, the main reason why they're losing their games, obviously, you know, I'm talking about the Mavs. The main reason why they're losing their games is because they're not playing as a team and they're relying on Luca to score big every time, you know. And, um, they did switch it up in game four, you know. Um, Luca still scored big, obviously, with like 32 points and like fucking crazy amount of rebounds and assists. But, you check the stats, and his his team had also a good amount of points, um, especially Brunson. You know what I mean? Um, and I was just like, "Oh yeah!" So they're they're changing their shit. But obviously, you know, um, the reason why I believe they lost on purpose, the Warriors, because in Game Five, you know, they fucking dest- they destroyed the Mavs, and um, yeah, I mean, they, I mean, the Warriors had to lead the entire game, so it's just like. It wasn't even just like, um, it wasn't even like, bro, it was predicted. Bro. I knew, I knew they were going to win. Um, and th- that was a good day too. I, I was at a restaurant, you know, just enjoying the game there, you know, eating some like chicken and shit, chicken, some mashed potatoes, some, you know, veggies and shit, bro. That was a good night, bro. You know, I was just enjoying that game with my family and shit and just, Woo, bro, it, it was so dope seeing Klay Thompson in action, bro. That dude scored so much, bro. Now he has a new nickname, Game 5 Klay Thompson, bro. Just, wow. Just amazing seeing, you know, seeing all of them just in action and just fucking getting getting that bag, bro. You know what I mean? Doing what they do best. You know, the Warriors are, like, literally the most experienced team in the NBA as far as championships and going to the finals and shit. So, it's such a hard team to beat. Um, yeah, but, um, like, there was, like, after the game, you know, uh, Draymond and Stephen Curry, um, they, they, um, they, they went up to interview, to get interviewed with, uh, inside the NBA, um, inside the NBA's little, like, little segment or show, which consists of, um, Shaquille O'Neal, um, what's his name, Chuck, um, Chuck something, I forgot his last, forgot his last name, um yeah chuck and like two other guys um yeah i don't know their names but i I do watch them a bit um yeah and they got interviewed up there and draymond you know he was like obviously celebrating and shit and then he then um shaquille o'neal asked um, draymond green that who 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 are who do you think you're gonna face in the finals and draymond was like i don't know shaquille asked him who do you want to face um in the finals and Draymond was like, like I don't know who I want to face, but I, w- I will tell you who we are going to face. And he said the Boston Celtics. And um, that kind of sparked like controversy. It was like, dude, the game, the people were saying, like, bro, it's the series isn't even over yet. Obviously, the Boston had the lead at that time was three two, but like, bro, like, what, why are you even saying this? People were just fucking, just like, and you know, bashing on them, which is you know, it's it's not out of the normal. People always bashing Draymond because you know, uh, people say he has a loud fucking mouth, which is like I don't see how that's a bad thing. He speaks his opinion. You know, people are literally, you know, people who who are fucking fans of Skip Bayless and Dick Ryan, Skip Bayless. You expect them to be this way because people like Skip Bayless, all they shit, uh, all they say is shit like they say shit like um. Oh, just play basketball and shut up. Like, just ball and keep your mouth quiet. It's like, dude, what the fuck are you talking about? That That's like, that's like, there's an undertone to that of being like extremely fucking racist. And for those who don't know Skip Bayless, is, he, he's a, you know, he's a white, um, I would consider elderly man, <laughs> you know, um, obviously above the age of 60, that he, um... He literally just bashes on people. You know, he bashes incredibly on LeBron James, um, which, um, yeah, I mean, I mean, is there really much to be said? I mean, how could anyone bash on LeBron James? You know, even apart from basketball, he does so much for his community and for people. Like, how could you ever bash on this man? Even just uh, try to tear him down. He does so much for kids. 
He opens up schools. You know, create. He tries to create. He does his best to create more opportunities for everyone that he loves, for everyone in general. How could you ever bash on this man? And if we're talking about strictly basketball, because that's what you know, that's what Skip Bayless loves. He loves talking about just basketball and keeping your mouth fucking quiet. Um, and LeBron James, also known as a person that doesn't keep his mouth quiet, which is amazing. I fucking applaud for that, and I salute him for that. Because you should not keep your mouth quiet. You know, he's LeBron James. Obviously, you know, he's on social media. He's on Twitter. You know, he's on Instagram, and he fucking. You know, he talks about what he wants to talk about. And he has the right to do so. You know? I mean, it's the fucking First Amendment, you know? So, you know what I mean? But people like Skip Bayless, you know? They, they're like, they're fucking old-fashioned. Like, bro, dude, NBA players are supposed to talk stuff, bro. Like, NBA players are NPCs. All they do is play basketball, bro. You don't see uh, NBA 2K players, you know... Talking shit to each other. It's just a video game, bro. They score. They fucking, you know, they win or lose. They go to their fucking house, you know, they get some rest. They train. And, you know, that cycle continues, bro. It's just like, but there shouldn't be anything else, bro. They shouldn't do anything more. You know, leave, leave the commentating and shit that to the professionals like me, Skip Bayless. It's like, bro, shut the fuck up, bro. It's just, I, I hate that shit, dude. Like, oh, he's a basketball player, so he can't talk what he wants to talk about. Like, dude, get out of here, bro. The fact that he still has a platform, and I'm, I'm being, I'm being, you know, um, very, um, uh, what do you mean? I'm being very genuine. You know what I mean? The fact that Skip Bayless still has a platform is insane to me. That he has a show, a popular show. It's, it's insane. It's insane because people will be like, oh, bro, he's just acting. And we're like, oh, he's just being over over dramatic you know it's it's all it's all a skit it's all acting bro just like you know telling me to relax bro it's just not that serious like bro what do you mean this these are his opinions you know what i mean and it's just like i don't know dude it's just i mean it, it, it's not only me it's not like you know i, I know i want uh, the i want to my podcast is based on hot takes and shit i mean it's even in my description but this is this is this isn't even a hot take. A lot of people have said the same shit about Skip Bayless. Like, why the fuck does he still have a platform? Why? I'm going on a tangent. You know, I'm, I'm talking about the NBA championships, and I somehow I, I, I'm like talking about this and ranting about this shit, this and that, and like I don't know. Um, let's kind of you know move on from that Skip Bayless shit. So um. So yeah, um, Celtics versus the Heat. You know they played a game seven. Wow, I mean, it just game sevens are so incredibly hard to reach. Cause obviously to reach a game seven, someone has to be in the lead. In, you know, after game six, and you just think like, dude, there's they're gonna they're, they're gonna beat them. You know, they're gonna beat this team. It's gonna be four two, but somehow the losing team somehow wins a game and you're like holy fuck now it's a game seven it's just dude game sevens are the craziest shit ever dude like insanely crazy because it's like now it's like to reach a game seven both teams have to be pretty much equally great dude they they equally have to be great you know to reach a game seven and you know, the Celtics and the Heat really proven that they're fucking insane, dude. They're both insane teams. And it's really a, ba- a battle of who's... Uh, about who's going to win. Because, dude, if they, went a, if they went to a game eight, like, if that wasn't even a thing, the Heat could have won that. So this is really just, like, uh, Rochambeau who's going to win. It's really a 50-50 chance of who's going to win. Um... Obviously, the Celtics still had a favorite. Um, uh, but, like, dude, initially, anyone could win, dude. And it, it, w- it wasn't even like, oh, my God, the Celtics destroyed the Heat Game 7. Dude, it was... The Celtics were up by four. Like, what are we even talking about? If, they, if, dude, if Jimmy Butler managed to score that three and got a foul, two shot free, or even just one shot, they would have tied it or they would have been a point up. Like, dude, it, it was literally... Like, just pure luck that the Celtics won. You know what I mean? In those few, in the last few minutes, right? 
Obviously, they, they, you know, Celtics are a fucking great team. I'm not gonna take away. I'm not. I'm not gonna take that shit away from them. Celtics defense is unmatchable. Are you guys listening to that? Their Celtics defense are unmatchable. These fuckers will guard you like they're fucking a house dog and a robber's breaking in, dude. They'll fucking guard you and they make sure they'll make sure that you won't fucking enter that shit. Obviously, the Heat, you know. They kind of, you know, they, they fucked up the Celtics vibe a little bit. I'll be real, because the way that this the Heat team gets in, dude, they get in, bro. They get in. But it's not an easy get in. It's like, it's a tough fight. It's like, you know, they're, they're just like, let me in, let me in. Like, like this thing of Jimmy Butler as a robber and Jason Tatum as a guard dog, you know? And the robber's trying to get in, the, the, the dog's, like, barking at him and fucking, like, just, like, you know, biting on him. He's like, the robber's like, let me in, bro, let me in. He's, like, he's like pushing in. He's, like, like halfway in. The guard dogs keep pushing him. Like, like that's how I see that shit. Like, it's, it's crazy, bro. This was, like, the Celtics versus the Heat, dude, that alone could be a championship um, game or series. Like, that alone, Right? Because these are two teams that are, like, proving that they are the best teams in the NBA, you know? But, you know, the Warriors ruin it all for them, right? That's that's literally what the Warriors do, you know? It's in their fucking names. They're literally, like, if you take away the basketball f- f- aspect from that, the literal names are Warriors, like, you know, you know what a warrior is? Like, they're fucking, they're battling, like, you know, like the Spartans and shit. They're fucking battling with swords. They're wearing armor and shit. They're fighting you until you're fucking dead. You know, they're trying to kill you. Like, their objective is trying to kill you. Like, their name is literally based on that shit. You know, and obviously, I get it's just a name. But then you see who's on that team. And we, the warriors just have fucking shooters, dude. They just have fucking shooters that pull up on you, bro. Literally pull up on you, bro. <laughs> You know what I mean? Not literally. Obviously, you know, I'm not talking about fucking gun violence. You know, I'm talking about like, I'm like, you know, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about basketball strictly, right? Don't fucking um, take this shit out of context. You know what I mean? But, um, yeah, I mean, the Celtics and the Heat, dude, that was a, a great game. I was 100% on the edge of my seat the entire fucking game. Because there was some points where, like, they would be tied. I'm like, dude, what the fuck? How are they tied? Like, I remember at one point the Celtics were, like, I think up by 18 or by 20. And I was like, oh, my God, this is amazing. And then I checked the score again. And, like, they're tied. And I'm like, what the fuck? How are they tied? Like, the Celtics making that much turnovers that they're fucking, that fucking Heat just managed to fucking, uh, what's it called? Tie up the game. It was a close game, dude. This was really a battle, you know? This was really a battle. Um, But, uh, dude, I mean, the Celtics really proved that, you know, um, their defense is unmatchable and and unstoppable because they stopped the Heat from, you know, scoring points uh, the last few minutes. And, um, you know, the Celtics took that lead. They won. You know, they won that game by four points. Again, four points. And I, I say that, I keep on saying that because... It was not a blowout, dude. This was a close fucking game. He literally could have easily taken that. So, um, yeah, I mean, do do what you wish with that. But, um, yeah, dude, championship games, you know, championship series. Now it's going to be the Golden State Warriors versus the Boston Celtics, dude. Literally two of my favorite teams. And I told you guys this. Go back to my own podcast. I'm like, dude, this championship series is literally going to be the Golden State Warriors versus the Boston Maver- Boston Celtics. I said this. I, I literally predicted this, and you guys are still, you know, I'm not saying all of you, because I know some of you guys are like, oh, yeah, yeah, he, he, like, he, he, he knows he knows a thing or two about basketball, right? But I know, I know, I know you motherfuckers, I know there's a little, a little bit of you motherfuckers, like, not doubt me and shit, and, like, bro, he's like, oh, bro, this guy wants to be, a, uh, he was a wannabe an NBA analyst, bro, like, he doesn't know what he's talking about, he watches people, and he gets their opinion off of them, and he talks about it on the podcast, like, bro, I, I, I know what you guys are talking about. I know what you guys are talking about, but you don't see what I do behind the scenes. And that's why I those opinions that you say about me, but like that shit doesn't matter because I know what I do. You know what I mean? I know, you know, 
I know that I go through stats. I'm looking at stats in each game. You know, how many shots were uh, taken, uh, how many were missed, how many were made. You know, I look at rebounds, assists, you know, steals, blocks, whatever, dude. Like, uh, like I look at percentages, bro. Uh, you know, I look at the history and shit. Like, bro, I, I do shit, bro. I do shit. So, like, for motherfuckers to be like, you know, oh, he doesn't know anything. It's just like, bro, that, that, that literally... I mean, you can say that you want. You literally have the right to say that. You know, I literally can't stop you from saying that. But just like, just know that I know it's, I just know that I don't believe you. And that shit doesn't affect me because I I know I do my research on shit like that. So, you know, and with that being said, um, Warriors and Warriors in six. <laughs> Warriors in six, bro. Warriors are going to beat the Boston Celtics. I'm going to say this right now. Stephen A. is saying it's going to be a Game 7. Kendrick Perkins is saying it's going to be a Game 7. J.J. Reddick is saying it's going to be a Game 7. Um, Kendrick Perkins and J.J. Reddick say that the Celtics are going to win Game 7. Um, Stephen A. said the Warriors are going to win in Game 7. I'm saying right now that the Warriors are going to win in Game 6. So, for motherfuckers being like, Oh, you have the same opinion as Stephen A. You love Stephen A. You love J.J. Reddick. You love Kendrick Perkins. Oh, my God. You love Pat Beverly's opinions. Oh, like, bro, I'm telling you right now. This is what I... No no one else has said this shit, as far as I know, that is a professional in this shit. No one... I haven't heard one person say Warriors in 6. Everyone's saying it's going to be in Game 7. So I'm saying it right now. It's going to be Warriors in 6. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. If I'm right... Suck my dick. <laughs> Suck my fat dick, bro. Real shit. <laughs> I'm telling you, dude. I don't fucking play with this shit, bro. I, I, I stick to my opinions. I, I, and I stand by it, bro. You know what I mean? I'm not going to let motherfuckers fucking, um, you know, tr- try to turn my opinions down and be like, oh, your shit doesn't matter, bro. Like, whatever. Like, bro, come on. Who, who, who do you think you're talking to here, bro? You know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not fucking no... You know, just like, oh, I'm going to listen to this TikTok guy. <laughs> yeah, I make TikToks, motherfucker. I'm not a fucking TikTok guy, though. You don't see me fucking shake my ass and shit like fucking um, Bryce Hall or whatever, bro. Or fucking Noah Beck or whatever. I don't do shit like that, bro. That's crazy. You know? Literally just have TikTok to fucking build my brand, bro. You know, whatever. You guys can fucking think whatever you want. Oh, my God. I'm fucking... I, I go off the rails so much, dude. <laughs> I go off the rails so fucking much, dude. It's insane. Um, yeah, but yeah, Warriors in six. Um, let me know what you guys think. Um, who's gonna win this series? What game are they gonna win? Um, but just let me know. You know, um, you guys have the right to your opinion. You think Celtics are gonna win in Game Four? You think the Celtics are gonna sweep the Warriors? Fucking let me know. Like, but you know, but just. You know, you just make sure you keep your opinion, you know, truthful, you know, um, be real to what you believe. You know, I, I've, I've, I mean, I've seen shit like that. People are saying, oh, my God, the Celtics are going to destroy the Warriors. And I just laugh at it. But I'm like, hey, but you guys have you, you have the right to have your opinion. So, you know, just let me know. Let me know in the comments of this YouTube or on Spotify or fucking DM me, dude, or whatever. Um, you know, I love engaging with you guys. Uh, or let me know on TikTok or whatever, you know, I might, I might make a TikTok, um, like an NBA championship, uh, theme TikTok. So let's see, you know, um, I made a couple of stranger thing TikToks, um, you know, just when new shit like that releases, I, I like to, um, and I think this is good advice, you know, I, I, like, I, I know I'm, I'm, I'm talking about the NBA championship right now, but like, you know, let, let's set that aside a bit. If you guys want to blow up on TikTok, you, you know, obviously there's a chance of you blowing up on TikTok because of this. I'm not saying you instantly are, but like, I mean, when there's big topics happen, like like when Squid Games happen, bro, that was a perfect time to make a shit ton of TikToks about it. You know, now it's Stranger Things season four. So just, you know, um, and it, obviously there's TikToks based on Stranger Things season four already. So, you know, use their ideas. Don't feel bad. You can use their ideas and, you know, you know, twist it around with your vision and make some TikToks. You know, you, you can do shit like that. You like, don't feel bad that like, oh, um, someone's already done that. Like, that's fine, dude. People love seeing a variety of, um, the same TikToks, but like interpreted in different ways. So, you know, 
Um, yeah, so I, I made I made a couple of Stranger Things season four TikTok. You know, if you want guys want to check them out, my TikToks on Wanted Mind currently. It's I'm sitting at sixteen point two thousand followers. You know, it's like three hundred and you know forty thousand plus likes on all my TikToks. You know, and this is not bragging. This is just 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 a friendly reminder of that's where I'm at. Um, because I'm well aware there's so many accounts that are bigger than mine and literally have less shit. And I mean, I would say obviously personal opinion, but like worse or TikToks in mine. You know, I'm not saying that mine are bad, but I'm saying I've seen accounts with like a few hundred thousand with like shit TikToks. So I'm like, okay, you know, <laughs> okay. But, um, yeah, let's get right into the next topic. <laughs> so, for the next topic for today, we have um, uh, Stranger Things Season 4. Um, I believe that's what I should get into right now. Um, since this is a big topic. And, um, yeah. So, um, I don't know. I, 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 how do you guys feel about it? You know, really just let me know how you guys feel about Stranger Things Season 4. Um, I really... I, I gotta say, but this probably hands down, if if not one of, maybe my favorite season by far. Uh, and this is volume one. There'll be two volumes. Um, second volume releasing in July first, I believe. Um, so obviously this is volume one. I mean, dude, I just and I'm gonna keep it real, dude. I wasn't really too hyped for this season because I kind I kind of feel like the hype died down because it's been what like a few years since. The last season dropped, um, and the hype kind of died down for me, at least. You know, w- w- when it was announced and released, even when it was released, I was just like, oh, okay, cool, you know? But, um, you know, I spent the weekend at my dad's. Um, I watched it with my brothers. My brothers were excited to watch it. They reminded me of it. I'm like, do you guys want to watch the season, you know? With me and they were like, "Yeah, sure, let's watch it." And I was just like, "All right, cool." I I, I wasn't literally, I literally wasn't thinking much of it. And then when I watched the couple episodes, I believe there's seven episodes, but I was like maybe a few episodes in, and I was just like, "Oh my god!" I I, I was literally stunned. I was speechless. I feel like I was in it, bro. Like, whew, wow. I mean, this was an incredible season. It was an incredible season. I mean, the, I I love when directors like it, it, obviously it's 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 one show, right? Like Stranger Things is one show, but like in each episode, there's like four different perspectives, and I love shit like that. There's like one perspective is like um, what's his name? Hopper? Is it Hopper? He's like in Alaska. He's like in a jail. You know, he's getting like tortured and shit by like Russian you know, police, a Russian guards or whatever, you know, and he's just trying to get out. Love that perspective, you know, and, and that lady, I forgot her name. Uh, l- let me just pull up the names real quick because I'm going to be like, oh, this person, this person, and you guys are going to be like, wait, who the fuck are you talking about? So um, I think it's way better if I just, you know, pull up the names and really just, you know, list the characters out and the, the different perspectives that um. You know that, that, that um I, I'm I'm trying to talk about right now. So yeah, David David uh well, no, no, Jim Hopper. Yeah, Jim Hopper. I was I was calling him by his real name, David. Um yeah, so it, it's like a there's like one perspective. It's like Jim Hopper with um Joyce Byers and um this other bald dude um trying to find Murray Bauman. Yeah. Um you know, obviously he's in um um, in that perspective, I'm talking about, and, and they're like in Alaska. So Joyce and um, what's his name, Murray? Joyce and Murray. Um, they're trying to like rescue Hopper, you know, um, from this Al- Al- Alaskan jail. Um, which I thought it was Russia first, but they're in, in Alaska, and there's Russian guards and Russian prisoners. Um. Yeah, so the reason why he's in jail because you know there's some Russian guards. They found him in the facility where um where Joyce and Murray thought he died because Hopper he jumped into like this 
obliterator or like this portal which exploded and Murray and Joyce at first thought that he just disintegrated then Joyce convinces that he convinces to Murray that um he didn't disintegrate that you know she got like this package or this doll and she breaks the doll you know because Murray told her to break the doll with like I don't know like she was like Joyce was like hanging some shit from the tree and she dropped it on the on the doll, like some Russian doll. And then when it breaks, there was a note. Uh it was kind of like it was kind of like a Morse code um kind of a Morse code I don't know, it was like scattered letters. Kind of a Morse code, I believe. Um and it was just like Hopper was still alive or some shit. Um I believe Yuri. Yuri was um the guy that was a part of this whole setup shit. Um, well, I mean, Yuri's main main thing was to um, get money, um, forty thousand grand more specifically, to um, get Hopper out uh, by some method that they had. Um, uh, yeah, that was one of the perspectives. I, I obviously I don't want to get into it too much because, like, I mean, you've got to watch if if you guys watch the episodes, you know, I I, don't, I really don't want to just like explain the entire episode because then you guys are like well I, I i know what i I know what happened i watched it right um and then there's another perspective where it, it's like um i'm looking at the names because I, I i forget so there's perspective where and there's another there's, like uh, when i see perspective i mean there's like it's like it's like it's a show but it's cut up in like four segments right like we have one and we're like the it's just strictly the parents. Then we have another one where it's a group of friends, and we have another one, it's another group of friends, and um, there's another one where it's just um, Jane, also known as Eleven, and um, yeah, I mean just like her. So you know, th- those are the four different um, segments that are cut up into each show. So yeah, then there's one there's one perspective where it's just uh it's Mike and um it's Mike and what's his name? What's his name? What's his name? Mike, Mike, Mike and Will. Mike and Will and um Yeah, it's Mike and Will and Jonathan and I believe that's it. It's it's just them, and um, yeah. So they're they're like you know they're getting ready because like I believe um, oh and it's eleven. You know the the eleven is in um she, she's in this segment a bit, and then later on in the in the series, um she has her like her little solo segment because you know she, she um. She's like getting tested, like like she lost her power. So she's like, she's um she she um rekindled again with um, what's his name? The the guy that um helped her get her powers. I forget his name. Um, I can't find his name on this list. But um, yeah, she she helped him get his powers, or she he helped him. He helped Eleven get her powers. Um, she he's 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 known as Papa. Um, and he calls Eleven daughter. Um, so was, yeah, let me just say Papa, cause I, I I don't I don't know his um on screen name. Maybe it is just Papa. I don't know if he has another name, like his real name, but he's known as Papa in this um in this show. So yeah, he she rekindles back with Papa to get her powers back. But um, yeah, but before that even happens, um. Like, um, what's his name? Mike. Mike flies in from somewhere to just rekindle with, um, Eleven, Jane. Jane's his girlfriend. You know, Eleven's his girlfriend. Like, you know, um, I was going to say Jane. But when I, when I say Jane, I mean Eleven. But she's known as Jane. Like, that's her, like, human name, I guess. Um, so, yeah, she, she he rekindles back with Jane. And he rekindles back with, um, Will. And, um... Yeah, so they, they they just meet they meet each other again, and um, 
Yeah, I mean, they, they have, like, you know, they're just, you know, creating plans and stuff. And then, you know, um, but little that little does Mike know, um, Jane has, like, some bullies at school that bully her because, you know, she talks a certain way and that she gets very shy and, like, intimidated. And they bully her for that, you know, um, they, they like, they... Do bad shit to her. They talk shit to her. Not even like you know around. Like they literally just say shit to her face. That like oh you're lame or you're a weirdo. You're a freak. They say like crazy shit to her. Like you know just think the worst. You know they say shit like that. I mean it, it, this is basically your average like you know like high you know like in most high school movies there's always like there's bullying this kid like yeah shit like that. Um obviously you know very very um what's it called. I don't know, like very simple. I guess like you, the whole narrative is just like I don't know, overplayed already. You know, the, the high school bully and this is like you know, shy kid. You know, basically that. But um, the the way that Stranger Things did it, I, I enjoyed, right? But I've seen a lot of narratives like this in other movies, and you know, eh, like we've seen it a lot already. You know what I mean? But yeah, I mean. To be fair, I, I did like the way Stranger Things did it. And it makes sense, right? Because Eleven is like, you know, she's she's obviously not a regular, normal being, right? Like, she has, you know, I'm not going to say issues, but, like, you know what I mean? Like, she was basically traumatized as a kid, you know? Like, fucking, you know, she had, like, visions of her, like, killing a bunch of kids in, like, you know, the facility that where she was holed. Uh, how we're held in with like you know everyone shaved heads and shit um so obviously you know she's had a lot of trauma and um she really doesn't know how to deal with it and then um you know there's a point where you know they bully her so much that you know she want to she like tries to use her powers against the bully um and um it doesn't work and um yeah she gets even more embarrassed and even more like what the fuck you know what i mean um, but then there's, 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 um, there's, uh, this roller skating incident where, you know, Mikey doesn't know that, um, cause Jane said that, um, she, that the bullies and, sh- and shit, like the bullies and her friends were Jane's friends. She said, oh yeah, her, the bully's name is Angela and Angela has a, like, a little group of friends, you know, it's just, uh, you know, little bystanders also bullies. Um, and, um, what's her name? Jane said that that, that was her friend. And, um, so when, when they pull up on, when they pull up on Jane and the roller skating shit, um, in front of Mike, Mike, I mean, let alone, I mean, you, you see like Mike thinks that that's her friends. So Mike didn't think anything of it. Like, oh, this is just Jane's friends. And then this might start to see how they start treating Jane and shit. You know, they embarrass her. They they take Jane in the middle of um the roller skating rink, and you know they're like they're like taping her and shit, and they're like calling her names and shit. They're like spinning her around. They're playing with her because like you know Jane she really doesn't she doesn't really know how to uh, roller skate. I'm about to say ice skate, roller skate. So they're like messing. They're pushing her around and shit until she falls, and then. They throw a milkshake on her. And mind you, they're, they're recording all this. Like, there's a camera person, like, recording all this as just, you know, to have as, like, I don't know, just as, like, I don't know, blackmail or whatever. Or just to show it at everyone at school. You know, like, some sort of intentions like that. And then, you know, Mike is watching all of this. And he's just, like, he's in complete shock. Because he's like, oh, I thought these were your friends. And he's they're doing shit like this to you. So yeah, and then that happens, and then um, you know, Jane just couldn't take it any longer. She, you know, you know, she was like crying and shit in like a room. Then she's like, oh, I can't take this shit. And then she like grabs her um, like the roller, like the roller blade, like her shoe, but roller blades, and she like yells at Angela. She's like Angela. Then she turns around. She's like, what? What do you want? And then you know, Jane like strikes her in the in the in the face. In the middle of the face, mostly her nose. So the roller blade like hits her nose. Hit hit the roller blade hits Angela's nose. 
and then her nose breaks and she's like bleeding and shit. And then Angela's obviously she's she's yelling in agony and she's like, "Oh my god, you hit me in the face! Like what the fuck?" And then everyone's just like, I mean, when I say everyone, I mean like everyone in the roller skating rink, like everyone in that room, like the arcade and the food area and the roller skating rink, like everywhere. They were all staring at Jane, like, "What the fuck did you just do? Like what was that for?" You know? And they try to make Jane look like the bad person. You know? They're like. Jane's the one getting bullied, and then when she fucking defends herself, she's the one who gets in trouble, and people look at her like, what the fuck, why would you ever do that, she, Angela's the nicest person ever, and I'm like, I remember watching that, and I was like, oh my god, people think Jane's the bad person now, it was just, it was so, just like, what, the nice person gets in trouble, and she's like, oh, I hate that, I hate that, dude, because like, what does a nice person deserve, to, uh, like, what do they deserve to get shit like that? You know what I mean? Like, why that, you know? Why isn't Angela, you know, the one getting in trouble, you know? But, yeah, I mean, Jane gets in trouble, and then, um, you know, they lock her up and shit. And, um, you know, they, 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 um, they send her back with Papa, you know, back with Papa to, you know, fix her powers and shit. So that's that's the second perspective. There's another perspective on where it's um it's mainly just um or Lucas. I mean, this kind of oh, how do I say this? I think there's more perspectives then, because Lucas is a part of a basketball team and with like some cool kids. Um, you know what I mean. Uh, Max, Max, he's like. A kind of a loner she's like she's a loner for a reason because you know billy you know she saw billy literally die from a demogorgon you know and she's kind of traumatized so now she's very introverted and antisocial. um lucas supposed to be her, supposedly her boyfriend she ignores like every time she's like listening to the song which the song has an incredible, you know, um, what's it called? An incredible, let's say, effect on this series, right? Like it, it um, if you know what I'm talking about, you know, right? Running up the hill. This this song has a lot to do with um the show. Um, so yeah, um. So, yeah, she's, like, always listening to that song. She's walking around school, just not talking to anyone, being very antisocial. And when people confront her about it, like, why are you doing this? She's like, I don't know what you're talking about. And she continues doing it. Um, so, yeah, and then there's also, um, what's his name? What's his face? What's his face? He's not listed on here, but there's another kid. Um... I mean, yeah. I mean, this like, uh, like you know, if 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 you don't know what I'm where I'm looking, at, I'm I'm currently looking at IMDb and I'm looking at the characters and like, okay, okay. So his name is Dustin. Dustin. How do how do I forget his name? Um. So Dustin. Yeah. Um. Dustin is also part of this perspective shit. He's like, he, I mean, he's just him. You know, he's um, he's a good kid. You know, he just he, he does what he um. What he usually does, you know what I mean? Um, and I believe, yeah, I mean, I believe that's pretty much all the people involved in, in this segment. So, yeah, and then there's another, oh, yeah, I mean, also, um, Erica, Erica Sinclair, Erica's is the little sister of Lucas, um, Okay, so, so I I found Papa's real name. Papa's real name is Dr. Martin Brenner. Um, I had no idea that was his fucking name. <laughs> uh, an- another person at, um, in this perspective is Eddie Munson. Eddie Munson is the person that um he's the basically the leader of um what's that shit called Hellfire? Yeah, the Hellfire Club. Which Hellfire is really just, um, the Hellfire Club is really just a, um, club where they play Dungeons and Dragons. And, um, 
And I realized this like now. I don't know if I'm a slow, you know, um, thinker when it comes to shit. I don't know. But I now come to realize that this show is entirely based on Dungeons and Dragons. Like the way everything is played out, like with like Vec, like what's the name, Vecna, like the type of Demog- Demog- Demogorgon shit. It's literally based on all Dungeons and Dragons. It's insane. Um, I mean, it's a fucking smart concept. Don't get me wrong. So Eddie Munson is the person that um people think are is the guy who killed Chrissy. Chrissy is the girl who got um possessed by this um. Demogorgon of some sh- of some sort um named Vecna um so yeah Vecna possesses her Vecna lives in the underworld an upside down world and he or or it I don't know if it's he or her um Vecna I'm, I'm just gonna refer as Vecna so Vecna like possesses human bodies um yeah, so yeah, so he like manipulates them. He like he tw- he breaks their bones. He twists their like. Okay, so first when Vecna possesses a body, they start see- they, like the the person who's cursed or possessed. They start seeing. They start hearing this clock shit, and um, they're like they they start seeing some clock like like times running out or some shit. And then they start hearing this like doom. And they're like looking around, like what? They're like what the fuck? And their eyes get all like weird, like oh, like like just pure white eyes, just like manipulated, like like kind of twitching, right? And then when, when if they hear it a few more times, they like they enter this underworld where they see Vecna, and um, the last time they hear it, they like they're like. They slowly start floating in midair, and their bones start like snapping, and their jaw breaks, and then their eyes are like the eyes like pop out, like not not pop out, but they get pushed in, and they're like yelling, they're like oh, and then when the body is unpossessed, they dropped, they drop from the sky. Like, cause they're, they're, like, floating, like, a few feet in the air, and then they get dropped, and they, they're basically dead already at that point. Uh, but they just drop to the ground, deadless on the ground, and um, it really happens randomly. I don't know if the character that they chose, like, the Stranger Things director, I don't know if the character that they chose has, like, a significant, you know, meaning... Obviously, it has a significant impact on the show. I don't know if it has a significant meaning, but um, I mean, based on the show, you you, you see why. But it it really could have been anyone, right? It, it really is technically it's not randomly, obviously, because directors choosing who's gonna get cursed and shit. But um, technically, in the show, it's not randomly. Like, it, uh, uh, technically, in the show, it is randomly. Um, I would say, uh, obviously the character they chose plays an impact on the show, but, um, so yeah, uh, that's basically Vecna and its powers. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, Vecna has his own perspective too. Um, and I think, yeah, and, and then there's also perspective with, um, what's his name? What's his face? What's his face? Bro, what? Oh, with um, Nancy and um, Steve and Robin. And yeah, and they're just like, they're just like, um, I don't know. They're, they're really just talking about their own thing. They're not really, I mean, they're, they're talking about like, you know, what happened and all and shit. You know, they're, they're talking about what happened. Like, what, why did Chrissy die? You know, and all that shit. But it, it's really just them, like, you know, talking to each other about about shit. Um, so, yeah, those are the different perspectives. I apologize if, you know, I might have lost you at some points. Or maybe throughout everything that I said. But, um, yeah, I mean, really just watch the show. 
um, I would really just recommend watching the show um, to get a better insight. Uh, but would I recommend the show? Hell the fuck yeah, dude. Like, I don't know why you wouldn't watch it. I mean, it's literally Stranger Things. Stranger Things is really the biggest thing Netflix has to offer, you know? Like, literally, Netflix really started popping off because of fucking Stranger Things, dude. Like, what 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 they brought with Stranger Things, dude, is just insane because this whole 90, 80 style, like, retro shit is so dope. And the way that the directors um, execute on this shit is very, very dope. Because it's just like the whole aesthetic with Stranger Things. It just, it looks dope. I, I, I like like the, you know, the, it, can I say LED lights? I don't know. Like, but, like the words are always like lit up, you know. And um, I don't know. It really has that 90, 80 style aesthetic. Like I love the show. I love the way shit looks in the show. I love the cover art for it, like the posters and shit for Stranger Things. The characters, you know, their outfits that they wear really symbolize who they are, and it's very dope. It really makes them stand out, especially Dustin. The way the outfits Dustin wears is always stands out and very dope to see shit like that. And yeah, dude, every character has his own thing, and it's like, um, dude, I just... Wow, I mean, it's just amazing. It's this show's amazing. This show's amazing. Definitely has to be literally up there as one of the best shows. You know what I mean? Like hands down. Um, but yeah, dude, this this show is very, very dope, and um, I'm a big fan. So yeah, I I don't know if there's much more to say about this other than just to go watch it. Um. But yeah, my favorite character in the show is um, Jane. I mean, and it's always been like that. Jane is just 11. I'm going to say 11. 11 has always just been like the character, obviously, that stands out the most out of the show and just really has a unique character, you know, build. And I just I'm in love with that, bro. I'm even in love with her, bro. She's (laughs) I didn't know I was going to say this on this podcast, bro. I have a big crush on Millie Bobby Brown. What can I say, bro? She's of age, so it's th- me like, oh, bro, she's 15. Like, shut the fuck up, bro. She's not 15, bro. She's above 18. Relax. Relax. Um, But yeah, they're not fucking... She's cute, bro. I know she has a boyfriend and all. I'm not trying to fucking... I mean, dude, if I could steal her away from her boyfriend, bro, I could easily do that, dude. I have incredible riz, bro. Like, don't even fucking play with me, bro. I have incredible riz, bro. Don't even try to fucking... Talk down on it. <laughs> but yeah, she's cute. She's cute. I fuck with her, bro. I fuck with her. Um, I really like Rena Lipa, though. Rena Lipa. Do a Lipa sister, bro. She, she, woo. Ow. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore, bro. Off the rails. We're off the rails. Next segment. Let's go. Okay, so for the next topic, we have um, Top Gun Maverick ticket sales compared to other big Memorial Day weekend hits. Yeah. Um, Top Gun Maverick, dude. I mean, I've heard a lot about this. I've seen the trailers and shit. Um, there was like a long-ass trailer before the Multiverse of Madness started. The movie started. Um, it, was, it wasn't really a trailer. It was a teaser. Um, but from that, dude, it, fucking this movie looks incredible, you know? Um, Top Gun Maverick, dude. I mean, Top Gun Maverick has been what the it's this movie started in what 1986. Um, fuck. I mean, this movie's been around for a while, you know what I mean? I mean, this series, this franchise has been around for a while. Top Gun, um, obviously, this movie came out this weekend. Um, but yeah, I mean, from the trailer, it looks dope. I mean, Tom Cruise, Tom, Tom I mean, it's, it's hard to see Tom Cruise in a bad movie. Let's keep it real. And I feel like that's not said enough. Dude, we don't really see Tom Cruise in bad movies, bro. This guy, he chooses incredible roles. You know what I mean? He He's built himself up to that where he can literally choose just the best roles. So, you know, seeing him in Marvel would be so dope. And I've said this, dude. If you play Superior Iron Man, it literally fits perfect because Tom Cruise is a Chad. You know, Tom Cruise is like a Robert Downey Jr., but Tom Cruise has more to his catalog, to his... 
um, resume, I would say, you know, than Robert Downey Jr. has. You know, I mean, what does Robert Downey Jr. have? Like, no disrespect, obviously, he's an Iron Man. But uh, what else does he have apart from that? Um, Sherlock Holmes? Okay, that's fair enough, fair enough. Um, Tropical Thunder? Okay, okay. Oh, so, yeah, he, 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 he has a couple movies. But when you really, at the end of the day, when you say Tom Cruise, you're like, oh, yeah, obviously Tom Cruise is superior, you know, to Robert Downey Jr. Which would make sense, because if he's superior to Robert, to Robert Downey Jr., Tom Cruise playing Superior Iron Man would be um, a perfect role. But um, I know he has a lot of movies. I know he's, he's, I mean, at the age that he's at, Tom Cruise, he's making a lot of movies. Like, he's he's releasing Top Gun Maverick this year. Next movie he's going to release is Mission Impossible 8, of which I've heard that this is a two-part series. Um, So, yeah, it's really hard to um fit in his a role in Marvel when he's working on so much other shit, which is also big. I wouldn't say as big as Marvel, obviously, but it's still big. Mission Impossible? Come on. That's a huge movie. Top Gun? Come on. Huge movie. So, um, yeah, obviously, it would be a dream to see him play Superior Iron Man, but, you know, you know, apart from the fantasy world, we live in a world world, so, you know, there's a lot of negotiations and um, schedule, you know, um, planning that goes into shit like this. Um, so, yeah, you can't always be living in fantasy world. Um, so, yeah, Top Gun Maverick, the sequel to 1986 Tom Cruise action flick, broke a record for the largest Memorial Day weekend opening, beating out 2007's Pirate of the Caribbean at World's End. Wow. What a big year for movies, eh? This literally broke a record for the largest Memorial Day weekend opening. It literally beat Pirates of the Caribbean, bro. What are we even talking about? Pirates of the Caribbean is an amazing movie, and Top Gun Maverick has beaten that. This year, as a 2022, bro, come on. We're still making big movies out here, bro. Relax. Um, Top Gun Maverick grossed um, around $165 million from Friday to Monday, according to a According to Deadline of Variety, uh, though Box Office Mojo puts its Memorial Day weekend opening and total gross at $156 million. Um, it's not clear how long the movie's legs will be, but for other movies in the weekend's all-time top 10 list, their opening week is accounted for roughly 32% to 52% of their box total office receipts, according to Box Office Mojo. So, obviously, this is a, um, this is a, um, big source. So, um... Don't take my words lightly. This is all from the source. Um, a reliable source, that is. Um, so, yeah. Uh, big number. One, 176.8 million. Yeah, that's how much the original Top Gun grossed in 1986. Um, dude, I mean, that's... I did not know that. That is insane. In 1986, that's how much it grossed. Fuck sakes, dude. They were fuck wow. And money was different back then, bro. Don't, don't, don't get it don't get it twisted. Be like, oh that's that's okay. Bro, money was different back then, bro. It, it was way harder to reach that amount than it is now. And even at that, this Top Gun Maverick didn't even top the first Top Gun, so <laughs> Yeah, I mean I died down a bit, maybe, but not that much, <laughs> not that much, just by 18 million, um, 16 million actually, which is literally not that much. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, so I'm gonna list out the um, largest Memorial Day weekend opening, so you opening, so you guys kind of have a idea of where Top Gun Maverick ranks. Obviously, it ranks number one, but these are its competitors. So, Top Gun Maverick 2022 released, obviously, 156 million. It has grossed in the, open, uh, in the weekend opening. Um, number two, obviously, already stated, we have Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End uh, with 139.8 million. Um, at third, we have Indiana Jones in the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Uh, Grossed at 126.9 million. At number four, we have X Men: The Last Stand. Grossed 122.8 million. Um, at number five, we have Fast and Furious Six with 117 million grossed. Um, 
at number six, we have um, Aladdin. Yeah, Aladdin from 2019, the live action Aladdin, not the original. Uh, grossing at 116.8 million. At number seven, once again, we have an X Men movie, X Men Days of Future Past, uh, with grossing at 110.5 million. <laughs> at number eight, holy fuck, we have The Hangover Part Two. Wow, it's did better than The Hangover Part Two. Fuck. Um, grossing at 102, uh, at 103.4 million. Okay. Um, at number nine, we have Solo, a Star Wars story, rank grossing at 103 million dollars. And last but not least, we have number ten, um, The Lost World, Jurassic Park, 1997, um, grossing at 90.1 million dollars. So that's the top ten list of um. Largest Memorial Day weekend opening. So, yeah, Top Gun Maverick has surpassed all of those movies. All of those iconic, legendary movies has surpassed all of that. So, um, if that doesn't give you a reason to watch the movie, I don't know what will. Because um, you fucking, fucking bet your bottom dollar that I want to watch this movie now. Top Gun Maverick, dude. <laughs> It's not just about planes, my boy. It's not about just planes. You might see the trailer like, oh, it's just planes and shit. They, they teach you how to ride a plane. It's not just about planes, my boy. There's a lot of action in this shit. So um, if you're into that, yeah, I would highly recommend. If you're not into that shit, give it a go. Give it a go. Obviously not a sponsor. Um, Top Gun, Maverick, listening to this, sponsor me, please. I need a sponsor. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, dude, I definitely want to watch it. I'm I'm incredibly excited for it too. Tom Cruise, come on now, don't come on, Tom Cruise, bro. We literally put we can put Tom Cruise the same level as Leonardo DiCaprio, fucking um Brad Pitt, or fucking you name it, bro. This is a uh, top notch actor in a top notch movie. So yeah, um. Uh, you so is it a little key background for those who are like oh what, what, Top Gun Maverick it sounds cool but what is it about um let me explain it so Tom Cruise reprised his role as Pete Maverick Mitchell from the original Top Gun Maverick as did uh, Val Kilmer as Tom Iceman uh, Kazanke they're joined by M- uh, Miles Teller as Bradley Rooster um, Bradshaw the son of Anthony Edwards doomed character Goose and Jennifer Connelly who portrays Penny Benjamin Maverick's love interest. Uh, director Joseph uh, Kowinski told Insider that not every character from the first film was considered to be in the sequel, particularly Charlie (parentheses Carly, uh, Kelly McGillies) and Coral uh, Meg Ryan. Uh, those weren't the stories that were thrown around. Um, I didn't want every storyline to always be looking backwards. He said it was important to in- introduce some new characters. Um, so yeah, um, I th- and I, I agree with that. I think that that's, that should be with every movie, you know, especially with sequels. You want to introduce some new characters. Um, Marvel has a great way of doing that. You know, um, they make solo films for new characters, big characters. Um, they chose, I mean, they introduced new characters through movies and they do a great way of doing that. So I'm a strong believer that when you do sequels and shit, you should introduce some new characters. Obviously keep the OGs. Fans love the OGs. You know what I mean? Like with Jurassic Park, Jurassic World. I mean, um, you know, you gotta, you gotta respect the OGs, but introduce some new characters, you know, bring some more life into this shit. Create more, um, what's it called? More, um... I don't know, I would say maybe legroom for this shit. Like, we, we introduce new characters, like, when a... Like, like, let's say um Chris Pratt, you know, in Jurassic World. He has a kid. And then once Chris Pratt stops making... Well, when he stops, like, filming in these movies, in Jurassic World movies, like, when, when his deal runs up, his son can take over, and his son could, you know, be the next dinosaur keeper or whatever he is. Um, and really just re-spark, you know, more... Um, light into this franchise, you know, more money to this franchise. They they would um, you know, much rather um, you know, um, have. But yeah, I mean that's, yeah, I mean yeah, it's always good to do that. I would say. Um, so yeah, I mean that's really much. That's really much what has to be said about this topic. And um, yeah, let's get right into the next topic. So for the next topic for today, we have um, Justin Timberlake sells his song catalog for $100 million. Yes, you heard me right. $100 million. Reportedly. Yeah. By um, 
Um, not stated, but yeah. Reportedly, so yeah, singer singer Justin Timberlake became the latest artist to cash out his song catalog, selling the rights to such hits as "Sexy Back," "I'm Bringing Sexy Back," yeah, yeah, and "Crimea River" um, to a London-based music investment company backed by private equity firm Blackstone. Uh, the terms of the deal with um, Hip Gunna's song management were not disclosed, but the Wall Street Journal reported Thursday it was valued at just above $100 million. It does not cover future releases. Yep, yep, yep. Um, I think with this, I, I don't know if Justin Timberlake plans into making more music. I don't know if he's really just um, focusing on... You know his acting career because for those who don't know, he, he Justin Timberlake plays a great actor. He's in uh, a quite a bit of movies, I, w- I would say. I know he's had he has this movie with uh, Mila Kunis. Um, I forgot what that's called, but he he be like he plays Mila Kunis' boyfriend in that movie. Um, and I saw that movie uh, a while back, but he did pretty good at it. You know, he, I would say he did really good at the movie, and um, it's not like cringe or it's not like oh, bro, he's such a bad actor. Um, like, you know, like, he, he plays a great actor, so I, I really, hey, hands down, I give it to him, you know, he does what it takes to be a great actor, you know, you know, he does acting classes, you know, he does shit like that, so, um, yeah, I mean, that's dope, um, it would suck that he sells his song catalog and he doesn't, uh, and he start, he starts making music, cause then it's like, you're not making any money from your shit, but, um, Unless there's like a equity percentage, I don't know. Uh, it's not stated, I don't believe. But um, yeah, I mean, if, I mean, if he doesn't plan on making more music, that's dope. You know, he got a hundred mil above a hundred mil. They said reportedly. Um, that's a bag. I mean, do you, bro? But if if he does plan on making more music, it kind of sucks. You know, because now he won't make any money from that. Um, I think that's how it w- I think that's how it works, right? <laughs> so yeah, Timberlake, 40, uh, 41 years old of age, uh, turns over full ownership and control to some two hundred songs he wrote or co-wrote, spending his career as frontman for the boy band and uh, and sync as a solo artist and for movie soundtracks. His stable of hits include Bye 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 and Girlfriend from Instinct Days, Crimea River, Sexy Back, and Mirrors from his solo career in Can't Stop the Feeling from the 2016 animated film Trolls. Um, he quotes, I look forward to, enter- to entering the next this next chapter, the pop star said in a release. Um, Timberlake's deal marks as the continuation of a trend of a long string of established artists selling their songbooks to big-pocketed investors of, or music labels. Uh, they are also fueled by streaming, which offers the possibility of more lucrative royalties as customers flock to services like Spotify and Apple Music. Um, in recent months, Sting sold his song catalog to Universal Music Group for $250 million, and David Bowie's estate sold his music catalog for $250 mil as well. Um, to Warner Chapel Music, the publishing arm of Warner Music Group. Late year, late last year, ZZ Top sold his music catalog to investment firm KKR and record company BMG for 50 mil. Uh, just weeks before, Bruce Springsteen sold his iconic song and publishing cat- song catalog to Sony Music for a whopping $500 million. Meanwhile, last year, Bob Dylan, um, a name you guys may know, uh, sold his massive 600 song catalog to Universal Music Publishing Group for a reported 300 million to 200 to 400 million dollars in December 2020. Um, Hypnosis, which was found in 2018 by uh, former music manager Merck McCarty, performed a partnership to private equity firm Blackstone in October to launch Hypnosis Song Capital. Blackstone was poured in an initial $1 billion into the fund, which announced this year that it was buying an 80% interest in Kenny Chesney's recorded music royalties, as well as Leonard Cohen's share of his songwriting catalog from the late singer's estate. The Timberlake deal is the vehicle's third major deal and its biggest so far, the company said. Obviously, it's hard to top. This is, um, I mean, this is fucking Justin Timberlake we're talking about here. This is a, um, very, you know, um, difficult, um, uh, musical artist to top. You know what I mean? 
Um, so yeah, I mean, do you guys think this was a this was a a steal for the for, you know steal from the the private equity co- company, the music l- label company, or do you think Justin Timberlake um got a bag out of this? I think he got a bag. At the same time, I mean, I I really have to look more into this deal. You know, because if he still plans on making music, and I'm not just talking about music by himself or with InSync or whatever, I'm talking about like you know, he because he, he does a lot of sound soundtrack songs. I've seen him on a lot of soundtrack songs. So is he still making money from that? I just I don't I don't know. You know what I mean? Because like it, it, I would hate to make such a great song, not knowing that I'm not getting any money from it. It would suck. Um, especially at that level, at that caliber, you know what I mean? You have all the resources to make a fucking hit, a banger. And, um, to not getting any money from that, I don't know. I don't know how that works. I don't know if he's getting royalty or percentage equity, whatever. I don't know. Um, but, um, that would suck. So, if that's the case, this is an L move. If it's not, it's a W move. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, you got your bag. 100 mil? Come on now. Um... But I, I think with Justin Timberlake, I feel like he could have got a bigger bag. You know what I mean? Like we're talking about Bob Dylan got like three hundred four million. Um, you know, uh, ZZ Top got like six hundred million. Like, bro, like these these are big names. But like Justin Timberlake, bro, I think he could have upped it a bit. Maybe he would just get, he got a little excited over a hundred million. He's like, yeah, let's do that. I feel like he could have bargained. He, he, I mean, not bargained, but I feel like he could have. Um, he could have argued a little. You know. You know, a little back and forth, friendly, 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 um, arguing, I would say, just like, what about 200 million? And then the company's like, well, what about 150? And then he's like, what about 170? You know, like, they, they could have done some shit like that. I, I don't know if 100 mil is a good, I mean, obviously, I mean, that's, you're good for life if, if you have 100 mil, right? But like, I mean, I don't know. We're talking about Justin Timberlake. You, you don't. Feel, you guys don't feel like he gets bigger. He gets big gigs like that. Like you don't think it's like. Do you guys really think it's hard for him to make a hundred mil? Like, come on. We're talking about Justin Timberlake here. Um, but yeah, I mean, it is the music business. I am aware of that making music for the music business. I mean, uh, making money for the music business is extremely difficult. So um, so maybe that is the case. But um. Yeah, I mean, I mean, dude, he, he's a grown fucking man. He can make his own decisions. So if he, if he believes that this is his best move, then fucking so it be, you know? I'm um, still going to be playing Justin Timberlake's shit. Don't not get me wrong. I'm still going to be blasting his shit. His shit's dope. Um, so, yeah, I got into all topics for today. Um, four topics. Um, and let me know how you guys feel about this podcast. I feel like I really had energy during this podcast. I feel like I really just, you know... Really like talking about what I was indulging in these topics. So um, let me let me know how you guys feel about this podcast. Let me know if I should um, keep this, you know, um, topic, you know, number like three to four topics. Tell, tell me if you guys, um, if you guys believe that's that's the best to talk about. Because like I hate just listening a bunch, listing a bunch of topics and not talking about all of them. I know you guys are like like left hanging. So. Um, so let me know if you guys feel like this is a better um model to do shit. And um yeah, I'm gonna hope you have you guys have a great day. You know, I'm very excited to um have talked about to have, be able to record a podcast. Cause like before I record a podcast, I'm always like, oh I gotta record a podcast. But when I do it, I'm like, oh it feels great, you know, like I'm doing it right now. So um yeah, I mean follow me on my socials, Inst- Instagrams, words I want in mind. I post every Friday on my main um on my creative lounge i have like an uh, i have a separate account called uwm creative lounge where i post daily on there um except for the weekend obviously but i post five times a week on there just creative shit for our wants in mind i post tiktoks every day i've been lacking um i've been lacking but i'm st- but when i do lack i post four tiktoks the next day so i kind of make up for it so um yeah um tiktoks every day though and um yeah i post on youtube every every other day you know gaming videos obviously the podcast and and you know um youtube shorts you know which are, are my tiktoks if you guys don't want to if you guys don't want to follow my tiktok for whatever reason uh follow my youtube i also post tiktoks on there so um yeah join the ride bro I'm telling you out bro 
Do not sleep on me. Let's go. Hope you guys have a great one. Genuinely. Hope you guys have a great day. Stay safe. You know, stay healthy. Drink water. Do all that shit. Um, I love you guys. Genuinely. See you guys. Bye.